Why can't I stop playing life service games? I don't think the term life service needs any explanation at this stage, so I'll get right into it. Why am I in some way addicted to life service games? The simple answer is because they're fun. They're crafted to be addictive. Though even knowing this, I still find myself playing them for much longer than I should, with my overall most played games being Fortnite, Apex, and Warframe, I think. I've also picked up the finals since it was released in December last year, 2023. So that's another one on my list. I've had a few of the games that I've explored, but never got too interested in them. But these Fortnite Apex and Warframe have somehow stayed untouched. Looking back, I think the first live service game I picked up was Warframe on a PS4. It was my uncle's console, so I never really got any mileage in the game until I decided to download it years later on my own console. For some reason, I could never delete the game, and despite not playing it much, I always kept it. It took my cousin, who has over 2,000 hours in the game, um, parting up with me for me to take it seriously. Since then, I have played a bit more but I think I'm only around like the 200, 300 hour mark. Fortnite is a game I remember downloading early when the Battle Royale was released. It's not a game that I ever thought I'd have over a thousand hours in back then and seemed rather bland and not too entertaining. It wasn't until a friend invited me to play it with him and his brother in Chapter 2 Season 6 that I first started seeing the game was kind of fun. A few years later, and I made quite a few friends through the game, and I've begun taking part in the yearly chapter end events, and getting excited and giddy for like the next season or chapter release, just because it's always exciting in some way. Apex Legends is another game that I downloaded really early on its launch. I had really slow internet back then, and I remember do the download taking quite some time. Much like Warframe, it was a game I had on, on my console for a very long time, but I never played much because I really felt bad at the game. Normally getting one clip by some war bouncing Wraith main with thousands of kills and wins. After some time, I picked up Titanfall and really enjoyed the gameplay and movement in the game, and decided to get back into the game around Ash's release, which really helped me ease into the game. Now I have almost 900 hours in the game. And much like Fortnite, I've also made some new friends that I occasionally play with from time to time. To also add, I grew up mostly playing single player games. I only got into online games around 2019. Apart from like the split screen, Call of Duty, some fighting games and racing games, my experience with online multiplayer up until that time was very limited. With that little backstory out the way, I guess I better get to the question. Why am I addicted to some life service games? Life service games can be fun. Um, take for example, Helldivers. Well, Helldivers 2, to be exact. Um, I haven't played the game personally, but I've watched people play it, I've heard people talk about playing it. It's, it's, I haven't really watched too much myself in terms of actually seeing what goes on, but I trust and believe that it is fun based on everybody else's reaction around it. I do hope to get to playing it at some point, but enough of that. While a lot of games that are forced down the life service path exist in greater numbers, life service as a whole are not inherently bad and can be really fun. Uh, starting with Fortnite, um, it's a game that I really can't play solo. I believe I'm a relatively good player, so it has nothing to do with any sort of challenge, more so the vibe. I started playing Fortnite because of friends, and based on my experience I found that the game is more of a social ex experience. It's always fun hopping into a game with the boys in, or either racking up some kills, or having some fun in PvP. Zero build of course. Because of that, a quick message from someone checking who's on during a not so busy day 
can end up in hours of stupid conversations and never-ending jokes. It also helps that the Battle Royale has a generous number of bots, so not every moment is a sweaty moment. Given that Apex Legends is a more competitive game, I really can't play it with the same friends that I play Fortnite with. Not saying they're bad, I just found that with different games attracting different crowds, the best way to enjoy Apex is with more competitive players. Apex is however also a game that I've spent a lot of time playing solo, which weirdly enough I find matching up with random is pretty fun at times, given that each player plays the game and essentially their chosen character different to any other player. I also find that I play ranked a bit more in Apex than I do in Fortnite. Um, with Fortnite it feels like I'm always you know, just full sending everything w keying every single person but with apex ranked specifically it feels like you sort of also have to think about how you approach it i'm not the best player so while i do win a lot of my one-to-ones i like to think i do also know that they are of course better players than i am so there is that Apex for me feels more like a game where I can hone my aim and gain awareness, which then allows me to be a better player in other games. The game itself is of course also fun and fluid, and each time I come back to the, to the game, the movement always feels so great and just smooth. With the other two games' main modes being Battle Royale, the finals is also a good and healthy alternative to it. I feel the game is very underrated, but still one of the most solid shooters around. Its customization and general gameplay is fun. The movement may feel a bit wonky compared to Apex, but thanks to the solid gunplay, destructive environments, the visuals, and the fact that it has commentators, the game has quite a lot of potential to be really great. I haven't made any friends there really, um, and getting my IRL friends to play um, or those met through other games to try it out always feels like a bit of a task Given that not all of them are either on current gen consoles or don't play on PC or Have tried the game and just didn't like it for whatever reason One friend I even play Apex with said that the finals feels or looks too fast for him He at this point still hasn't tried it um, and you know looking at it um, i've been playing with like the light character every now and then and it's really fun not necessarily preferred in terms of like the rank mode there but they they do move around a lot and i, I can see what he means though to me i guess it doesn't feel that way but nonetheless i enjoy playing it because it's not like any other games that i play <laughs> With all that said, I'm still a huge advocate for single player games. I still find myself drawn to life service games though, for whatever reason. Um, there are games that I have in my collection as well as others that I'm looking to get such as Final Fantasy, God of War, Horizon. Uh, and a few Souls games, of course. But um, the main point is that even though this is, well, single players are how I started, rather got into gaming, it seems that now I'm becoming a bit more social, I guess. And because of that, I find that live service games are really fun. Sniper 2, bro. That's another yeah. good thing about it. Ooh, 116. I almost oh, knocked him! finally it. got some fucking ammo. We almost up with him on a Dude! While live service games can't deliver the type of storytelling one can get from a movie or a single player game, they do allow for different and really more social type of fun. I'm not a very social and outgoing person anymore, but I do find being social in these virtual worlds is somewhat fun. Live services like the ones that I mentioned here really do help out with being at least a bit more social in that way. 
I've been gaming since I can remember, and due to most of my early influences being solo experiences, the change to life services is quite welcome. There are, of course, games that I choose to keep away, very, very far away. I never tried Marvel's Avengers for obvious reasons. I played like 10 minutes of Gotham Knights. And there's just a bunch of other games that I've picked up over time and they just never really clicked. Apart from that, some games like Destiny 2 have just insane monetization. I remember getting into the game with two of my friends and it was really interesting at the time. It was just more of a, a, a fun experience just having as well. We can just jump around and you know, go on this crazy little adventure. But then a lot of the other experiences, a lot of the story, story content and just a lot of stuff was hidden behind paywalls a lot of paywalls and that really made it hard to get into the game and just enjoy it we eventually just stopped playing it another was dauntless dauntless when i tried it was it felt very repetitive um i currently have two or three friends that are really really like into the game and i downloaded it for the sake of like checking out with them but yeah it it, it it didn't feel good. But anyway, I guess I should rather say that I'm addicted or like playing these specific games over others. And I am always willing to, you know, check out a new life service game or anything new that can create that kind of experience, you know. Um, with me having had my Warframe streak at some point in 2023, I... I have then tried out the first Descendants beta with two of my friends and they liked it. One being that it would be like a new experience that we'd start together, but also it, it was just fun, you know, swinging around, third person shooting, etc. But yeah, I think I should then close out this video. The games I've mentioned here are all free to play, of course which greatly lessens the barrier of entry, allowing almost anyone with the means to play them to at least have a chance to give them a try. If you haven't, which I'm sure most people have tried them in some way, I dare you to give it a shot. See, see something that you may not experience in you know, single player games. I still love them. I'm looking forward to Stellar Blade for <laughs> obvious reasons. But um, yeah might make another video on why I find it hard to finish single play games these days. Maybe. Until then. Take care.